and welcome to our English news coming to you from Canada, Algérie, to the headlines. The President of the Republic receives a phone call from the Qatari Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Tani, during which they exchanged best wishes on the eve of the Eid Feast. Military graduation ceremonies held throughout the country, a fresh impetus to the People's National Army. And as usual, we wrap up our news with a sightseeing tour to one of Algeria's seaside cities. Antipaza is our stop over the 40 nights. Welcome back. First in our news, the President of the Republic, Abdel Majid Tabun, received on Tuesday a phone call from his brother, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Tani, the Emir of the State of Qatar, a brotherly country in which he offered him and the Algerian people his best wishes on the eve of Eid al-Adha and wished the Algerian people further progress and prosperity. For his part, the president thanked his brother, the Emir of Qatar, for his noble feelings, in turn sending him his best wishes on this occasion and wishing the brotherly Qatari people greater prosperity and peace of mind. The leaders of the two countries also expressed their satisfaction at the special relations between the two brotherly countries and agreed to hold a meeting in line of these fraternal relations. The military graduation ceremonies are still held across the national territory at the end of a successful training to the benefit of the People's National Army. Mel Sakibash with more details. School of Military Health hosted a graduation ceremony where four classes from different specialties ended their training this year. The graduation ceremony of the 36th group of officers and students of the National School started with the inspection of the graduates by the General Secretary of the National Defense Ministry, Major General Mohammed Saleh bin Bisha. In his keynote speech, the commander of the school recalled the main axes of the training and both military and scientific knowledge acquired by trainees and students, calling on graduates to deploy all efforts in their professional career and face all challenges so as to honor the prestigious school. <laughs> After taking the oath, the laureates receive their ranks and diplomas, followed by the handover of the national flag to the next class. The graduating classes bear the name of Mother Omar Lisnami, known as Omar, one of the National Liberation War's heroes. Following the approval of Major General Salah bin Bisha, General Secretary of the National Defense Ministry. The ceremony then witnessed a military parade carried out by graduates. At the end of the ceremony, the family of Mother Omar Lisnami was honored before the General Secretary of the National Defense Ministry signed the Golden Register of the school. In Tlemcen province, the Transport and Traffic Application School also hosted a graduation ceremony, which kicked off by the inspection of the military formations by Major General Mohammed Tayyip Brakni, commander of the 2nd Military Region. The school's commander highlighted the main axis of this military training, allowing trainees to face all challenges that might encounter them. <laughs> After taking the oath, the laureates received their ranks and diplomas, followed by the handover of the national flag to the next class. <laughs> The 
The graduate class bear the name of Murder Ahmed Rahali. Military exercises were presented as well as a military parade reflecting great performances in this field. <laughs> An exhibition was also organized where high-level military equipments were displayed. Finally, the family of Ahmed Rahali was honored. Similar ceremonies took place at the level of the Higher School of Military Administration and the Higher School of Equipment. Let's discover more with Najah Tayyar. After completing a high-level military and scientific training, the graduation ceremony of 10 groups from the Higher School of Equipment, Al Mujahid bin Mukhtar al-Sheikh Amoud, took place. The ceremony started by the inspection of the groups by the Major General Central Director of the Material at the Ministry of National Defense, Siddiq Ismail. The commander of the school then delivered a speech in which he praised the great effort made by the managers and officers of the school, as well as the preservance of the students. The laureates took the oath afterwards and were given the certificates and ranks, handed over the national flag to the next class to graduate and were given the name of the late war veteran, Ben Abba Mabrook, after the approval of the Major General Central Director of the Material at the Ministry of the National Defense. The traditional military parade was performed by the graduates who showed great skills and coherence reflecting the high level of training. An exhibition was organized on the occasion presenting the teaching tools used for each speciality. The graduation projects were also exhibited. The closure of the ceremony was marked by the tribute paid to the late war veteran Ben Abba Mabrook's family and the signing of the school's guest book. Same atmosphere in the second military region, precisely in the Higher School of Military Administration, Akhmo Haj Musa in Iran, that began with the inspection of the graduates by the Central Director of the Stewardship at the Ministry of the National Defense, General Haj Busilda. On this occasion, the director of the school gave a speech in which he praised the high level of training provided to the graduating students. Subsequently, the laureates took the oath and their certificates and ranks, then transferred the national flag to the next graduating group in line and got named after the martyr Baghdad Mohammed called Jalul. A military parade was performed by these laureates and was a demonstration of the great mastery, precision and consistency, thus reflecting the high level of the curriculum. On the sidelines of this event, the graduating projects were presented and at the end of the ceremony, the family of the martyr Baghdad Jalul was honored. Prime Minister Ayman bin Abdurrahman received the Secretary General of the Organization of Arab Petroleum Exporting Countries, Jamal Isa Al Lughani, who is now on a working visit to Algeria. The meeting was an opportunity to pay tribute to the co cooperative relations and coordination between Algeria and this organization and to discuss ways of strengthening the organization's activities and its role in the field of energy and monitoring related developments at both regional and international levels. The Secretary General of the Organization of Arab Petroleum Countries was also received by the Energy Minister Mohamed Arqab. The two sides discussed cooperation between Algeria and the organization and ways of developing it. Lughani expressed his thanks for the Algeria's support, adding that his visit is meant to update Algeria of the latest preparations of the Conference on Energy, which will be held in Qatar next December. An agreement with the Algerian oil institution in the field of training was signed on this occasion. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad, Ahmed Attaf, received the special envoy of the Burkinabi Transition President, Dirisa Sawadugu, now on a visit to Algeria, the meeting was a good opportunity to review bilateral cooperation and ways and means of further upgrading them, notably in the economic sector and political coordination. More than 42,000 Algerian pilgrims are, are to head today for, for a Arafat mountain to accomplish this ritual. 
the backbone of pilgrimage. It is called as well the Day of Repentance and Acceptance of Supplications. It precedes uh, the sacrifice feast coinciding with the 10th of Dhul Hijjah of the lunar Islamic calendar. Military operations continue along the Wall of Shame in Western Sahara. Sahrawi Liberation Army units carried out new attacks targeting Moroccan occupier, occupier positions in the Fiyin region in the Farisiya sector and in the Aria, Agd Argan and Aguira Uld Ablal regions in the Mahbas sector. The Mahzan regime maintains its violent practices to silence the Sahrawi people and prevent them from getting their rights. All means are allowed and now one is safe, including children. More details with Melissa Kabesh. Men, women and children. No one is safe from the continuous violence carried out by both occupiers in the occupied territories of Palestine and Western Sahara. In Palestine, a number of prisoners are tortured, according to a recent report of the Under-Palestinian Secretary and the Social Development Ministry. Nearly 170 children suffer from all forms of torture and violations in the Zionist prisons. Faced with the silence of the international community, a large number of Palestinian prisoners are found dead due to medical negligence. The same situation prevails in Western Sahara. The Mahzan regime continues to torture Sahrawi political detainees fighting against the occupier and for their right to self-determination. According to a report, the Executive Bureau of Sahrawi Human Rights Defenders in Western Sahara condemned the physical and psychological practices perpetrated by the Mahzan against political prisoners. The report also mentions several cases of Sahrawi detainees tortured. Therefore, the International Day Against Torture was an opportunity to launch a call for the United Nations and all international organizations for human rights to put an end to these heinous, inhuman exactions. Good news for Tipaza lovers and holiday makers as the tourism complex CET is finally ready to welcome visitors from all over the world in the best conditions, according to our reporter Najah Tayyar. Entirely rehabilitated, the Tipaza village set a tourist complex with all the assets that captivate the holiday makers looking for a change of scenery and tranquility. This village was built in the 1970s. A total refurbishment was more than necessary over the years to be in line with the international standards and the results have paid off so far. We signed agreements with other companies like Mobilis and Sepia. Also due to the Arab Games that will take place, there will be a delegation visit to Tipaza and we are waiting for its confirmation. We have 210 bungalows, 10 villas, which one of them was visited by the Queen Elizabeth. We also have two large swimming pools. One of them has a swimming pool for pregnant women and the other for children. This vast village, located between a forest of pine trees and Tipasa coast, has the capacity of 772 beds and attracts both foreign and local visitors. I spent the days of my childhood in Algeria and here I am after 46 years to discover more of my country. After that I have retired. I came to spend years as much as possible and here where I discovered this magical place by the seaside and also the ruins of ancient civilizations next to it. It is the second time I come to Algeria and I am loving everything about it. The old music, the cuisine, the history and the culture, everything. In the last step of preparation, 50 beaches were inspected and they are all ready to welcome visitors of this season. A peaceful stay at the edge of Tipaza coast that several enterprises worked on making the best version of it, all in favor of the Algerian tourism. Najah Tayyar was reporting on the set complex. And we wrap up our news with this short interview with a promising talent in the realm of literature, Shayma Lashtar from Minia province. Though she is young and shy, she wants to have a brilliant career. Let's listen to her. Uh, I am Shayma Lashtar. I am uh, uh, I'm studying uh, secondary foreign languages. And I am from Minia. 
Okay, now you told me that you have been uh, writing maybe your first novel. What can you tell me more about your career of uh, writing? I actually, uh, actually, I, uh, I uh, participated in a competition and I won. Mm -hmm. So now you, it's a good beginning, maybe. Now, can I know about your ambitions? What do you want to be in the future? Uh, I want to be a translator in the future, and for Hobbits, I want to be a mangaka. Mm -hmm. And uh, a word to conclude this conversation, what do you say to, to our viewers? Uh, Aid Mubarak to the all Muslims around the world, and uh, thank you for having me. That was it for today. Thank you for joining us. Good night.